Welcome to Cradle. This is an adventure exploration game made by Flying Cafe for Semi-Animals, which is maybe one of the greatest company names I've ever heard. It's really something. If you'd like to play this game for yourself, as always, you'll find some more information in the description. Alright, let's begin the game and then I'll talk a little bit more about it. Let's go ahead and skip the tutorial. I've only played for a few minutes so far just to familiarize myself with the controls and make sure all the settings are set correctly, so I'm going into this pretty much blind. I have a feeling I'm really, really going to like this game. Because if you haven't noticed, and well, you probably have, this game is incredibly beautiful. And one of the things I like most about kind of adventure and just exploration games in general is, well, exploring. And especially exploring places where people live or have lived. You know, rifling through people's stuff. They're books and their drawers and their notes and just looking at everything around is something that I really love in adventure games. And the environment is so incredibly beautiful and detailed. I mean, just look at how good everything looks and how much stuff is here and how lived in this place feels. It's really amazing. So I can't wait to look at every single tiny little thing in the environment. Like, this is like heaven for me. Yeah, I've actually been following this game for over two years, actually. Yeah, over two years ago. I saw some screenshots released for this game. And it's been in development for quite a while. And the screenshots, the screenshots just look so gorgeous that I've been following it ever since. And, uh, well, here it is. After so many years, it's finally out. So before I really, like, start playing the game proper, I just want to mention one technical thing. So when I first booted up the game and I was tweaking settings to make sure everything was set correctly, one thing I noticed immediately is that, uh, and I'm going to say this both so you, you can understand kind of what's happening with with, uh, with my view being so kind of herky-jerky as I move around, and also just as like a warning for anybody who's thinking about buying this game. Uh, the controls for this game are terrible. Um, not the, not the like, movement and the keyboard controls, but the mouse controls, rather. There's two absolutely horrendous things going on with the mouse controls. Um, one is that there's a dead zone, meaning if I make very small movements with the mouse, my view actually won't move. Which feels awful and leads to this, like, if you go to move your mouse really slowly like I am right now, it leads to this skipping effect. Because a lot of my inputs are being ignored because of the dead zone. It feels really bad. And the other is that on top of the dead zone for the mouse, there's also mouse acceleration. So if I move, you know, moderate speed, it's like this, but if I move fast, suddenly it's super, super fast. So between the dead zone and the mouse acceleration, uh, moving your view feels horrible. And of course, I check the options menu. There is nothing in there for mouse acceleration or anything of the sort. There's just mouse sensitivity. Um, at the moment, the controls are not even rebindable, by the way. First thing I thought about was, okay, I'll just use a controller. You know, maybe this game's meant to be played on a controller, fine. Uh, but I plugged it in, and it turns out this game does not support controllers. Uh, literally at all. So that didn't work. So in the end, I ended up settling for um, making an XPatter profile for this game. Um, XPatter is a utility that allows you to simulate mouse and keyboard on a controller. So I set that up, and it ended up not being good enough. Like, it just wasn't as precise as using a keyboard and mouse. But I'm not going to throw that away entirely. I am going to, at times, switch to the controller that I have in my lap. Because the one thing the controller does allow me to do, better than the mouse and keyboard, is get some nice, smooth pans like this. And this game is beautiful enough that it really deserves smooth pans. So yeah, I'll use the controller for smooth pans. Other than that, it's going to be kind of jerky with the mouse and keyboard, unfortunately. Nothing I can do about it. 
Okay, let's get to the game proper. So this is my uh, my little hint here. You can press it at any time and it tells you, I guess, what you should be doing. You don't remember your name nor recognize where you are. The note on the table is penned by your hand. Read the note. Okay, so I've got Amnesia. Uh, not the most unique start, but that's fine. Amnesia's not... it's not terrible to have Amnesia in a storyline, it just depends on what you do with it, really. Tabaha. I got fat, and now I smell bad. Turn off your nose and don't look at me. <laughs> what? I didn't say goodbye to Ongots. I waited for him all day, but he didn't return. Please feed him and change him, lest he gets sick. Follow this recipe. Heat the red pot, glass of water, some fruits, dried root, okay. Ingredients and stuff. Cook until it's done. Ongot will show up as soon as he smells the food. You can sell all the stuff if you like. And toss the body in the river. I won't be coming back. Enabish. Alright, so this was penned by my own hand. And it's signed Enabish, so I guess I am... Enabish? Toss the body in the river. Um... Have I murdered somebody? No, I don't think that's it. I think it's talking about... The, the woman... Android uh, robot over there. Yeah, she is. She's amazing. I saw her in the early screenshots for this game, and I was just captivated. There's something really just incredibly fascinating and beautiful about her. I think she tried to talk, but it looks like she's broken. Yeah, I, I think you can try to fix her, because I think you can, like, take off her... Yeah, you can take off her, her chest and get into her inner workings. Uh, can I set this down? Yeah, oh. <laughs> okay, it's kind of rude just to drop her chest on the ground. But yeah, I think you have to try to repair her. Um, looks like that's the only... Oh no, her head comes off, too. Okay, I guess I'll just drop them on the ground. I wanted to put them on the table, but fine. Oh my god, okay. You know what? Uh, let, let, let's put this back. If I take off too many parts, it's gonna be like a watch where I just don't know how they went back together and it's never going back together. Just leave her there for now. <laughs> but yeah, she's she is incredibly fascinating looking, like... I don't know, just everything about how she's constructed, her design is just so beautiful. It's like this incredibly beautiful mixture of this very, um, this, this very human look, very feminine, but also just really interesting, um, kind of, I, I don't know what the word might be, androidic features? You know, all this interesting, like, inlay in her body? I don't know, she's just amazing to look at. She's really, really... Really interesting looking. Such crazy detail in the environment. I want to look at literally every tiny little thing. I just wish I could zoom in. But I can't. What the heck is this? I have no idea what that is. Ooh. Ready. Oh, no. Come back here. It says ready. Ready for what? Looks like it zooms in a little bit. Hmm, can't use. I have a feeling I need all these tools, so I better not drop them on the ground or have them, like, roll behind a filing cabinet where I'm never gonna find them again. Oh, right, I can just put them in my inventory, I kinda forgot. Uh, that can't go in my inventory, though. Oh my god. Yeah, look at how much detail is in the environment. Seriously. These notes here? These two little notes that just look like they're like nothing and just part of 
Like, just part of the texture, you know? And they're unreadable. But no, they're actually readable. Even this post-it note is a separate note. Like, that is insane. I might literally spend the entire episode just in this room. I'm just going to look for every tiny, tiny little thing. Our genometer is broken. It lied to us. There was nothing special about those flowers. All were ugly. All we did was waste perfectly good covers. Take them to the platform, please. Tabaha will pick them up in the morning. Grandpa Batchin. Hmm. I wonder if this is a flower cover. You know what? I think it is. Yeah, because it looks like these things. I think. Yeah, actually it is. You can see that little thing on the back with the wires going up to it. Behind these flowers? That's the same thing that's on this. Yep. Well, I don't know if he was talking about these flowers being ugly, because they certainly don't look ugly to me. Number 33 and 26 are fine specimens. Need a red... Gerbera with 95%. It's rare to find anything that high. Searching will take a while. Red Gerbera. Is that a type of flower? And 95% what? Dear readers, alongside the aromas of spring grasses, quite the pleasant tidbit of news flitted into our editorial office today. Thanks to emerging technology, the process of cleansing of its bitter component may become 2% cheaper in the very near future. Also, I just noticed this little thing is gyrating in the background. That's kind of creeping me out. Um, anyway. With the rise in Passium's profitability, every one of us becomes a little bit richer and more useful to society. The minimum HQ to justify cleansing would dip from 30% to 28 so that even depressing monstrosities with 30% on their displays, could derive profits from their nasty emotions. Huh? I don't know what any of that meant. Passium. Passium. Is passium an emotion? Like, pa passion? Or oh, passiveness? Because it talks about nasty emotions and depressing monstrosities and profiting from emotions yeah so that mm. yeah something about emotions and like a minimum threshold of cleansing and s profiting from emotions and passing them. very very strange Okay, I don't want to spend the entire episode just on this board, so I'm going to save this stuff on this, uh, I'm going to save reading this stuff on this board for a little bit later. <laughs> that's a picture of a female chimpanzee with her child. Yeah, I'll save that for later. Oh my god, you can even read this, like, poster that's covered up and obscured by everything. Can you literally read every note on this board? Oh my god. I like reading stuff, but this might be too much. Let's let's come back to the reading later. You can even read this little like what even is this? Antique bank antique banknote from 1961. You can even separately read that blurry little smudge on the ground. 7 covers per pack. What is that? I don't know. But yeah, I'm not going to read everything right now. Let's look around for maybe objects, maybe. Do some puzzling or something. Synthetic sterilant for phytocopier loading. Even this smudgy... <laughs> Even this little smudge here on the ground can be read. That, that is honestly insane. I've never seen... I don't think I've ever seen a density of environmental detail and interactivity like this, ever. 
Ever. What is this thing? Grace Embalmer 2. Hmm, it looks like there's some petals that have fallen off in the thing. Um, is this for preparing flowers? Looks kind of like it's supposed to go in there. Message, no flower in the Fido copier. Hmm, yeah. Fido copy covers, P3 format. Yeah, it's for preserving flowers, I think. Or copying flowers. I don't know, it says Fido copier as if it's supposed to copy, but then this says embalmer as if it's supposed to preserve. I don't really know. Alright, so this thing is, like, this little thing coming off of her is, like, it's actually attached to her. And it seems like it's keeping her legs, like... I mean, it seems like it's connecting her legs, as if she can't even spread her legs at all, which means she wouldn't be able to, like, get up and walk. I mean, it looks like she's crafted so that she stays just like that, and she's not fully articulated with her legs, it looks like. Yeah, like, she's not meant to actually walk, it seems. For once in a game, I found a flashlight, but I don't even need it yet. That's kind of amazing. Ew, there's goo all over the shelves. Looks like android blood or something. Is there something hidden back here? I guess some notes. You can- look at this! You can literally read every single individual thing on the ground. I can read that. I can read that. I'm pretty sure I literally could spend hours just reading the notes inside this room. That is absolutely, unbelievably crazy. I have never seen this much note density ever. Ever. I'm gonna have to read it in, in little bits and pieces. There's no way I can read that all. I'd just be so exhausted. Hey, there's a remote back here. Looks like it's just a TV remote. Is there... Oh, there's a TV. No, don't drop it. Use it. I, I can use the remote to turn it on, but we'll need to power it up first. Okay, fair enough. The on button is jammed, I can't press it. Oh, great. Hmm. So if the on button's jammed, then how do I turn it on? No broadcasts, I guess. Thermofluid tank filling station, affordable. <laughs> Everything magazine. Minus one and a half billion. We're dying out. It's four years into the epidemic, and our nine billion are down to just seven and a half. Only thirty million people had the courage to get body replacements in the past year. Help is on the way. Dear parents, taking into account current circumstances and sharing your concern for the fates of your children, we... 
We... what? We undertaking? I guess it's supposed to say we are undertaking an extraordinary measure. To wrap up the clinical trials of the neurometabolic prematurely and bring the drug to market. In return for granting the manufacturer indemnity, your children will soon receive free access to the medicine. The World Health Organization. Wow, so it's so severe that they're looking at wrapping up the drug trial prematurely before it's even been completely verified safe. Because I guess that's actually deemed better for the public health than waiting. So there's an epidemic killing off the human race. Or there was. Maybe it's already ended and most people are dead. Okay, I think I might need that pot that's up there. Yeah, what did this note say? I was supposed to cook something, right? Heat the red pot. Hmm. Okay, well, it's not a red pot, but it is a pot. Did it work? This thing isn't even lit. Oh, there we go. Do I just need one? Yeah, I guess I just need one. Alright, I need some matches. Oh, wait. Some wood might be a good idea. I mean, paper burns, but not for very long. Honestly, I think you'd want more paper than just that, but okay. Yeah, there's gotta be some matches nearby. Of course, I don't think I actually want to light it yet until I have the other stuff. Oh, that's a lighter, isn't it? Yeah, I think that is. Alright, let's just save that for now. Yeah, there's no reason to light it. Not yet. I still need to add a glass of water, add some fruits, add a dried root, apparently. And I have to grind it first. And apparently I also have to add salt. Yeah, so there's no reason to light it yet. Karunga. I bet you want to know what the outside world looks like, don't you? Well, guess what? It's freaking beautiful! You want a slow pan? Let's get a slow pan. Yeah, to say this game is beautiful would, I think, be an understatement. It's freaking gorgeous. I can't wait to explore all these places. Like, look at that place over there, it's so colorful. And look at... Look at that, like, I don't know what that is. Some sort of tram system, I think? Like, what is going on with that? I want to know. I also want to just walk off into the water and just walk off into the hills. And just see what I can find. But for now, let's explore more of our immediate environment. Okay, where was I? Right about here. Oh my god, it's the year 2076. And it's a Friday. Woohoo, it's the weekend! Oh. Uh. July 25th, Saturday, 2076. Today is the 26th anniversary of the... Kuln... How do you pronounce that? 
Kuln? Kuln? I don't know, Kuln? Something like that, catastrophe. When a consciousness emulation experiment at the Institute of Neurocopying in the city of Kuln went awry, it resulted in the first ever emission of desperate toxin. This day went down in history as the start of the Lilith epidemic. Oh my god. Consciousness emulation experiment. Okay, this is really important. This is the key to what happened with the epidemic. So they're trying to emulate consciousness. And they discovered some sort of new emission that they've never seen before. Desperate toxin. And that started the epidemic. Jesus. Hmm. Is this the red pot? It's got some red on it. Uh. A little bit of red. I don't know. Let's just leave those there. Dirty mirror, you can't see anything. Whew, the sound design is so good too, listen to that. You can hear the water like the little last few drips when you turn it off. That's so cool. To care for the bone formations of the mouth cavity, for organic bodies only. Oh, wait, am I not an organic body? Was my consciousness transferred into a robot body so that I can continue to live past the epidemic? You can even open it down here, oh my god. So much detail. <gasps> Damp rags. an old wet newspaper that's like stuck to the inside of this thing. They succeeded in reading the brain for information and storing it as a digital copy. The new technology has been dubbed neurocopying. So what is a neurocopy? Memories? Upon hearing this question, the developers favored us with an indulgent smile. Evidently, it's not quite memories. Fair enough. We shall let the essence of the technology remain a mystery for now. Instead, let us celebrate another momentous victory in the world of science. It may not yet be the complete consciousness transfer some are hoping for, but is nevertheless a steady step forward toward the goal. Well, as we know, neurocopying didn't exactly work out all that well. Kind of started an epidemic. That's a writer in an M body. is 2056. Okay, so that's somebody who's had their consciousness transferred into a certain synthetic body, I guess. Door is jammed. Annual National Hunting Golden Eagle Festival. Collect 200 stickers and get a big red ring. Cool. I seriously can't get over how much detail there is in the environment. Even this name, this little tiny name tag right here, has its own description. That is so amazing. It's a cleaning product. With the fragrance of Passium's Sweet Isomer. Mmm, smells like science. Free of chlorine or phosphates. Footprint of a brown hair. Tiny white crystals. Could be citric acid. Ooh, this must be the red pot, right? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Well, I feel wrong just leaving that on the ground, so let's put this back somewhere nice. Same with this. Put it back somewhere nice. Hmm. I can't rotate it. 
Come on. Uh. Uh. There we go. <gasps> no, it went back. Okay, I need to rotate it and then drop it. And then pick it up. Okay, there we go. Yeah. This is like Viscera cleanup detail. You know what? That's going to be my trash can. Uh. Oh, God. What have I done? You know what? I think the collision model for this pot is not... Concave? Is that the right word? Concave or convex? One of those two. In other words, you can't actually put anything inside of it. But I'm still gonna try. Eh, good at No. Come on. Okay, I'm gonna call that good enough. Dusty bottles. I can even read this newspaper here. <gasps> no. I don't know if I can use this to get water. Nope. Dang it. I really want to put stuff down, but it either drops like right at your feet or you throw it like a crazy man. There's even descriptions for these stickers or whatever they are. First neuro copy. 2043. Oh no. Oh, I can actually pick that up. Well, alright, I'll take them all, whatever they are. Oh no, I can't pick that one up. Did I run out of room? Oh my god. I ran out of room already. This is gonna drive me crazy, the fact that I can't put stuff back properly. I'm gonna have to, like, throw it, like, try to jam it in, and it's gonna fall on the ground, and I'm gonna end up having to put everything in a pile, like, in the middle of the of the building, I think. <laughs> I'm gonna have to resort to that. Mongolian tea. Water, brew, butter, rice, milk, salt. Hmm. Sounds interesting. Legume powder. Hmm, what is this? Is that a satchel? You know, they mentioned Mongolian tea, and now that I think about it... Like, that kind of... that hat looks kind of... Mongolian. I wonder if I'm maybe Mongolian. Or something. It is becoming worrisome to constantly refuse, refute sensational yarns of humans living with modified genocopies. copies. We will therefore simply offer a universal fact. The narrow copy is viable only while embedded in its native inborn gene pattern. Replacing as little as a few nucleotides in your genocopy copy would sever this bond. And it is well documented what happens to consciousness that becomes disconnected from the body. Yeah, I guess it's pretty inevitable that once you start copying people, people are going to want to not just copy themselves, but better or alter themselves, you know?
right? I mean, first step is copying, second step is improvement. Oh, well. Am I going to sleep? What the heck is this? I guess that was a dream. Getting prepared for the for the transfer. Welcome your new M body. Yeah, I guess M body is like some some particularly popular synthetic body to transfer your consciousness into. Hmm. Is that a tablet? Ah, I don't know the password. Yeah. Uh, how do I get out of this? Bort. There we go. Uh. Hello? <laughs> How do I get out of this? So I just clicked on I don't know the password. Okay. Great. Use. Escape opens the menu. Jump. Enter. Backspace. Control. Click. Right click. Middle click. Scroll wheel. Uh... Did I break the game? I'm either an idiot or I broke the game. Controls. Pressed it. Pressed it. Pressed it. Pressed it. Uh, what have I not tried? Shift and tab. No. Okay, cool. I broke the game. I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I really did break the game. I just restarted it, went back to it, and as you see this time, it actually shut off when I clicked that button. And before, it didn't. Weird. Uh, anyway, it reset my inventory, unfortunately. But whatever, I didn't really do much. I see you hiding back there. Not even the linens can keep you from my prying eyes. The gene's revision mechanism has formed around 200,000 years ago. Curiously enough, it is present only in the human nervous system. Nothing of the like has been detected in other animals, including primates, our genealogical cousins. It is hard to imagine what might have pushed the ancient man's organism to carry out such sophisticated self-modification. Mongolian Astronautics yeah, so... Mongolian, like... Mongolian things seem to be all over the place. My clothes look Mongolian to me, although I don't, I'm not very familiar with Mongolian fashion. There's a recipe for Mongolian tea. Here's some, like, stickers or whatever these are for Mongolian astronauts or astronautics. Present observations. It looks like we're beginning to get to get used to discomfort. Reports of appearances of new spheres of contamination no longer evoke quite the same resonance in the media. There were two more emissions of desprotoxin in the past week, but this is probably the first you're hearing of it. Okay, so that's I guess shortly after the outbreak of the desprotoxin, which started the uh, the epidemic. Screen size, 42 inches. Oh, that's got to be the box for uh, this that TV, I think. Yeah, looks about right. 
Integrated... Whoa, Integrated Emotion Suppression System. Um... So, is that like an improvement on the technology to allow you to use the TV as a, um, like a babysitter? You know how people do that? Like, park a kid in front of a TV and put on a Disney movie or something as like a replacement for a babysitter? Is that like that same thing, but the, the technology taken further? To literally suppress their emotions so that they're just like, catatonic? Or, or is it related to the desperate toxin in the epidemic? Sweet dreams in a new cradle. Cradle. That's the name of the game. Grandpa Vatchin has arrived. Let's make goulash. Child and sheep. Handmade flag. Signed, good hunting. Hmm, there's a sticker for some sort of hunting competition or something, too. Like an eagle on it. Somewhere. Uh... I don't remember where. Oh wait, there it is. Yeah. Annual National Hunting Golden Eagle Festival. So maybe I was a hunter. And I'm not familiar with uh, Mongolian names, but perhaps these are Mongolian names. Grandpa Batchin? Woman knitting. Kenya Mombasa. 30 degrees centigrade year-round. Child's photograph. The inscription is shaded with a marker. Reads at the bank of Yves Lake. I'm probably mispronouncing all these names, by the way. Apologies for that. Returning with bounty. Yeah, so I think either I was a hunter, or perhaps maybe Grandpa Batchin was a hunter, or somebody, somebody in my family was a hunter. At least somebody, maybe all of us. A cedar forest. A happy grandmother hugs her grandson. Hmm. It's locked. Riding an old Mongolian. Yeah, I guess I'm part of a Mongolian family. That or the people who lived here are a Mongolian family. I'm not sure if I'm actually part of a family. But I probably am. A virtual tour of rock art monuments. You know, I don't think you can save at any point you want. No, I think you have to rely on uh, checkpoints. Yeah, so I think if I stopped right here, I think everything I did would be erased, which, granted, isn't very much. But, yeah, I guess you really want to complete something, or don't do anything at all. Otherwise, all the little intermediary steps you did will be erased. I want to do, like, one puzzle-like thing. I mean, all I've done is put the pot in there and the paper and the wood. I want to, like, fill it with water or something. Let's be daring. Let's fill it with water. Even though my progress is going to be reset as soon as I quit. Oh. I guess you need to use, like, a particular cup. And this one ain't it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wow, that actually worked. Okay, I'm pretty sure the volume of water that was in my cup does not equal the volume of water that I just poured into there, but I won't complain. Okay. I did something. It's been like 45 minutes, but I actually did a puzzly thing. How cool is that? I poured water into a bowl. I don't know about you, but I think I'm going to be done with this game pretty quick. I think maybe 20 more hours and I'll be done. Yeah. Alright, so... <laughs> yeah, this game is going to take me a long time to complete. I don't... I really don't know, and I don't think I'm going to read every single note, because it's absolutely insane how many notes there are. There's probably like a dozen to two dozen notes just right here in this pile on the floor. There's such an incredible... 
unbelievable amount of detail in the environment. I don't know what to do. I'm overwhelmed. But uh, I'm just going to keep exploring it so long as it's interesting. And even though I've basically not left this room and I've explored maybe like a fourth of it. Even though that's all I've done for like 45 minutes. Just think of how much we've learned already. I mean, really, let's just sum up some of the things I've learned. So there's this um, android uh, synthetic woman here who needs to be repaired. Looks like she tries to talk, but she's broken. And God, her eyes are mesmerizing. There's this embalmer thing that looks like it preserves flowers. There's a TV that suppresses emotions, somehow. <laughs> One that I can't turn on. We are far, far in the future, and some sort of... epidemic has happened. Uh, to be exact. The Colton catastro Catastrophe. Because of a consciousness emulation experiment that went wrong. Which released a Desprotoxin, which is a previously unknown... particle? Or something. Whatever it is. And I'm sure there's more that I've forgotten. Oh yeah, apparently I'm Mongolian, or the family who lives or lived here is Mongolian. Even though it kind of feels like I've done nothing just because I've barely moved and I haven't solved any puzzles, in reality, I have. I think it's important to divorce solving puzzles from, like, a feeling of accomplishment. Like, you don't have to solve puzzles or overcome a challenge to feel accomplishment. I've just explored the environment and I've learned all sorts of interesting things about the world. So yeah, you know what? We have accomplished something. We've learned a heck of a lot about the world. And there's a heck of a lot more to learn. Which I'll do in the next episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And I'll be back soon.